Hey guys, this is Jody with the Whiskey Rebellion Barcast. Here we are. It's a Wednesday. We're doing our thing. Uh, we're having a good time. Hey, cheers, everybody. Welcome to the show. And um, love that guy. Uh, anyway, so um, hey, you're two fisting it there, Mr. Miami. And a bottle kill. Yes. What yes, bottle are you killing up there? What was that? I didn't see it. I John J. Bowman. Bowman. Oh, Bowman. Bowman. Yeah, yeah, Bowman. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I, I'm kind of mixed on it. I'll be honest with you. You know, um, I heard that this one, I want to say this one's the same mash build as Pappy, but I don't want to speak out of turn. I'm sure when Chuck introduces the show officially, we'll get a, a quick little one on this one. Um, but it is a Buffalo Trace sourced, and it's, I believe it's aged at Buffalo Trace, and then they ship it to Virginia and they age it further there, blend it, and then ship it out. The, the Bowman family has three or four different lines. This one, um, John Jay being the first time I've had this bottle. Um, Bowman Brothers is their small batch and they're all really, really good. I really, if you can find one, hunt one down and get it, it's, I would definitely do. This is also um, John Jay Bowman single barrel, not the small batch, but the single barrel. Uh, it's a hundred proof. Um, and they call it a product of Virginia, so. Um, I don't want to take up too much time on it. So there's an Isaac okay. Bowman too. Hey Jay, was all that what he said? Can you uh can you validate that as being true? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Look at me. I'm becoming an expert. Holy shit, the show is working. You know, I, I, I don't think he ever, I don't think he ever got one wrong, just for the record. I think he's always had his facts straight. Hell yeah. Eagle rare, boom, bitches. I mean. Anyway, uh, Chuck, introduce what our topic is going to be tonight before we get too lost. And we'll have this big phone thing down here at the bottom where little John just uh, looks like he's just going to be talking to us via his phone. Okay, tonight's topic is going to be while store pick fever continues, fall means fall releases. What remaining releases have your attention? Which will you attempt to acquire and which will not interest you at all? It's a fascinating topic. You know, we haven't heard from Mr. Jay Cooper, Pappy himself, uh, the new grandpa on the show. I haven't heard from him in a long time. So let's let him start. What do you think? Um, so I love store picks. I, I always have. Um, are we talking about, you know, any releases or just store picks? I wasn't quite um, clear. This there. is like any releases. <laughs> you know, we could be talking uh, Stag Jr., uh, Midwinter Night Stram. We could be, you know, Pappy Van Winkle, Butak, what have you. Allocate, allocated. So I'm a huge fan of George Stagg Sr. Um, yep, I, every every year I, I got to get one. You know, yep. that's that's my Pokemon. Got to catch them all. Yep. Um, <laughs> wow. And now I feel and, like I don't want one because you, you compared it to Pokemon. I've, I've equated it to Pokemon. I love it. Yeah. It's the Pikachu of allocations. Um, anyway, so uh, I'll always, I'll always hunt that down. You know, um, you pay I, I don't, secondary for it. I, I sometimes have, absolutely. Okay, I won't deny it. And other times I've been, you know, more fortunate. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's one of those that I gotta have. So I don't care. It, I, I would life and limb to get it. So. Um, most uh most of the other allocated stuff i'm not really into now i don't know if you would consider this allocated but here's a release that i'm super super stoked to get a hold of primarily because i've decided i like weird and it is um the blackened the the metallica blackened willet uh collaboration so, I, I wish that. you would have told me about that because uh, i just tried it hell yeah well, well tell me tell me about it. i'm i really want to know mm. I, what, what's the price point on it first and foremost 149 it's yeah. 150 yeah, I, would, I, I would not pay over 60 dollars for it it was good <laughs> yeah it was like it was fun but no so you're not getting it so it sounds like but if you would have told me that yeah. i actually seen two of them in the wild the other day and because i don't like to buy gimmicks and i don't really care much for will it i chose to pass on both of them but i can definitely go up there and look tomorrow and see if they're there and they are i'll just pick them both up and we, Likewise, I saw it at the store I was at Monday. So yeah. uh, if that's what you're looking for, I will try to get it for you. 
There you I, go. I'm, I'm absolutely wanting to try it. I, I, I want to know if it skews more towards the blackened uh, blends that I've tried or if it skews more towards the Willet. See, so, my hope is it's going to be pre um, pre the Black Album by Metallica because that was all their good shit. And when the Black Album came out, they sucked from that point on. Just my opinion happens to be fact backed by academic resources. All right, so let's move to the next person. Um, Little John, what about you, man? Is there anything you're looking for? Things that you that you're excited about? You know, so on and so on. Um, well, for me, I'm probably um, one of the releases I'll probably go after is, um, and I think it was either supposed to drop <clears throat> last week, this week, or sometime before the end of the month is uh, Maker's Mark, the FAE FAE series. Um, their second um, release for the fall. So um, I'll probably be hunting that one down. We need to make a chat. You know, we need to put all this in the chat. Um, so we, we can have one of those. So, so yeah, we do. I, I just attended uh, a Maker's Mark tasting with Carrie Ann. Um, Which I love to get her on the show sometimes. If you're not she is smart. <laughs> hey, that's my girl. I got the hookup. So, we so can does get Jay. Her and I've, I've talked to her numerous times too, but I don't know her like the two of you guys do. We got to try that FAE too. Super. Super. Nice. <clears throat> how how does it compare to the to the first one? Is it still so, got the the heavy on the cherry? Absolutely, yeah. But I don't think it's as oaky. So it was it was a lot more mellow, a lot more balanced. Um, it had a better mouth feel. We all thought that I was with a bunch of people. So um, it was the star of the night's tasting of all of all five or six things that we tried that night. It was the absolute hands down winner. So it's going to be a hard one to find. Get it. Nice. nice. All right. What about, um, Annie, what about you? Um, I don't hunt or really go to liquor stores at all. Uh, they just show up at your have... house. <laughs> well, I, I know. Well, here, here's my little like, stick is that I know what I like I can get what I like and that's what I stick to like obviously I, I like some allocated shit and if I could get it for retail I would do it but I like I'm not gonna wake up and sit at a store forever or like make it my day to go try to get some allocated shit like I know what I like MGP I can get it everywhere like if I knew that there was an M10 ride down the road and I could go pick it up at retail yeah, fuck yeah, I'd get in my car and go get it. But other than that, like, there's nothing really that I'm like, oh, I gotta have it. I understand that. What about you, Rob? And welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Um, I was, I, you know, I've I become this kind of, I'm not gonna call me a Maker's Mark fanboy, but, you know, I, I've kind of really been digging on them the last year and a half. And I've got, I got four of the six releases that they came out with in Ohio on their private selection. I got one from Virginia. I got uh, the FAE 01, the beginning of the year. I got the, the release from last year. So I'm, I'm kind of, if I can find FAE 02 and PA without, well, I don't have to worry about pricing, but it, it's finding it on a shelf or getting it online before all the trolls get to it. Um, and the other one is if I can find it, I'd, I've only had a, a midwinter's night dram in an ounce or two at the bar. And I really, really enjoyed it. So it's a very interesting drink. That's for sure. Um, it has a lot of, I could be wrong in my interpretation of it, but to me, it's, it has some, some unique complexities that every time I drink it, it's, it's one that I have act eight, I think it is. And for me, I, I feel like it's a perfect by the fire, it's cold outside type of drink. You're going to pick up a lot of those same notes. That's the reason why I'm saying by the fire. You'd pick up a lot of the same notes you get from that. But then you would also get a lot of the almost like a gingerbread that's that's uh, related to it. So it's it's got some of the some interesting complexities that I like of that dissolute but i can't tell you that i'm looking for it anymore it's not one of my favorites by any means like i like the little books better than i like the um midnight midnight winter drum or whatever it's called uh midwinter well you know what i'm talking about uh, yeah 
Yeah, that one, I, I like it, but I don't know if that would be something I'd be searching for that's, and I realize one is they're totally two different products, but I was just saying that if I was going to compare them price point wise, or they're close to it, the little books would be what I would look for probably in the same type of series. I do find them to be a little bit more interesting, closer to what I enjoy uh, from a taste, but I would also second the aspect of uh, the Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark, man, in 2020, I think they stole the show. Um, and I still think that, but We'll get to me on what I'm looking for here shortly, but I was just wanting to, to second that. And by the way, Mark, everything you sent me minus the Simplify, it's already been uh, consumed. So those two makers marks are gone. They were fantastic. <laughs> so, um, but uh, anyway, what about Mark? What about you since you're already up on here? Yeah. So sorry, I'm late. I've been, I'm fighting with Wi-Fi here. I'm up in the, up in the Arizona Hills right now. Um, Definitely the uh, the FAE O2 for sure. Um, looking for the this year's coming up uh, the Midwinter's Night. Rob, I swear I didn't realize you were looking for it, man. I, it was I was all over the place. I could have sent you one. So this year, keep me posted. I'll make sure you get one, man. All right. But yeah, O2 for me. The, the FAE O2. FAE O2. Nice. All right, Billy. What about you, man? There are two things that I'm after that I want to get my hands on before the end of the year. Stag Senior, Stag Junior. That those are the only two on my list. And I'm I'm ready to pay dearly for the Stag Senior if I have to. Um, as far as any of the allocated stuff, um Well that would be allocated. Or, well well stuff yeah. that I'm oh, not yeah. looking for. Um, believe it or not, I'm not looking for Eagle Rare. I'm not looking for bland ends or anything like that. Um, I know I'm going to get my hands on some of the Maker's Mark stuff. Um, I'm already first in line for that. Uh, two Rock Hill Farms I'm in the line for already. So the Stag Senior and the Stags Junior, those are my two that I'm really, really after. <laughs> nice. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, and, and you know where one of the two Rock Hill Farms uh, has to yes. find its way to. <laughs> All right, so Jack. Let's try that again. <laughs> what's that? We're trying that again. Well, we figured out the system this time. But uh, Jack, what about you, man? Um, for me, you know, I haven't really bought anything in a while. Maybe one bottle here or there, and it's been a store pick or the Copper Sky. Uh, so, which is kind of all, obviously all, well, the store picks aren't necessarily local to Colorado. Um, the stores are, but, you know, usually the, the stuff is because I have a pinhook yellow um that casey uh spirits wine provision store picked or hand picked that the, and i stole that one is that the six year uh i'd have to look it's in my top shelf okay. here in my closet and i don't want you all to see my stuff i think i think all um, of the uh all of the store picks are six years i could be wrong but i think i think that's that's accurate on those but as far as like <laughs> nationwide slash allocated stuff which i know that's almost an oxymoron um Probably the Elijah Craig, what is it, C291 or 921 is coming out, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, probably the Maker's Mark, the FEO2 as well to, to kind of complement some of the other Maker Mark that I already have. Um, VTAC stuff, if I run across it, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have my connections and I have my, I guess my contacts that I probably just touch base with. To see if they had anything but just like annie i'm not really gonna go out oddly enough this year and waste a lot of gas and time you know trying to be the first one in line or even really trying to hunt it if i find it i do if not oh well say lovey nice chuck what about you man i think i'm interested in the uh the two parkers heritage um yeah, offerings i was able yeah. to get uh two of the heavy char um parkers last year and i'd like to get the uh the weeded um char and the uh i believe it's the 15th edition which are you know should be coming out probably october november uh, consecutively and then uh of course makers mark fae 02 um and then of course you know if i'm able to through my relationships that i've built up you know with our uh some of my locals I'd like to get the uh 
Eagle Rare 17, possibly a GTS, William Lou Weller, and of course the, you know, possibly uh, Pappy Van Winkle products as well, if possible. But then as far as something that's less desirable, I guess you would say not, you know, not heavily allocated, I'm going to say Midwinter Night's Dram and uh, the Bowman cask drink that's going to be probably coming out in November. Hmm. So at the risk of, of potentially um, putting off some other folks here who have super sophisticated palates, I'm, I might, might be aiming that at you, Annie. Um, but Chuck, I, I'm very interested to know with your sophisticated palate, really you like Pappy? You like the Pappy products? I feel okay, kind of like I you mean, do. I, I feel a lot like what Jay just said. I've had the, now granted, I've only had the, the 10 and the 15, I think that's right. Is it 10 and 18, whatever the next year is. Um, I've only had 15. I've only had the, the 10, and the 15 and I, are they good? I, I would absolutely say they're really good, but I've never seen them even in a retail setting close to retail. Okay. Well, that's the difference. That's why well, I would get them possibly most likely um, at close to MSRP. But would I pay half retail? No. Or I mean half secondary? No. Would I pay secondary? No. But it, but if price were no object, and you're lying hey, up was, a, there. I was going to say, for me, the price thing, it doesn't matter. Like, when you get into that age, for me, it's so oaky. And that's not my profile. So, like, obviously, it's it's a cool bottle. It's got great history. It's mm -hmm. awesome. And like, I think I love everything about it, but it's not my flavor. Like, I just want like a nice, you know, 10 year, doesn't even have to be 10 years, but I'm just saying like, it's just too oaky for me. I don't like it. We talked about that once on the show, uh, back a couple episodes, you know, where's the perfect age? Uh, Cause I, I would argue that 12 year, 12, 10 to 12 is probably within the perfect, maybe eight to 12. Um, but there's there's the one offs like the seventeen still to in my opinion the best the best bourbon I've ever had period it's Eagle Rare uh, seventeen year and that's fantastic you know um, and it was a twenty twenty version so but like I've had the fifteen like I was telling you um, I've had other fifteen year products and are they good sure but not at the price point a lot of them are at. Uh, so I can definitely understand where she's coming from with that. I, I do like the oak taste. I prefer that more so than a lot of other profiles. But I just feel like it's it's almost too heavy, if that makes any sense. Uh, instead of having, you know, it's, it's almost like having, you know, one of the things I've said on the show numerous times that I, I, I love Guinness. And I think Guinness is like a pork chop in a bottle. It has its time and place. But to me, it's not something you get hammered on or drink all day because I don't I don't see how I could possibly do it. I feel so damn full. But uh, but it's kind of like that with uh, when it, as it ages further, you have a, a lot of definitely I think you lose a lot of the maybe I'm wrong, but this is what my my profile would pick up. I think you lose a lot of the complexities that you would normally want. And then you find yourself picking up a lot more of just the standard, you know, notes that people pick up. Uh, but they're generally heavier um, often, like the notes are really predominant. And then, um, and then of course, it just feels like a heavier drink. That's again, just an opinion, uh, you know, it's obviously subjective, but, um, but that would be where I would go with that. Uh, when it comes to like, even the, what is the Van Winkle 12 year lot B? Is that what it's mm -hmm. called? Yes. I thought it was great. I mean, I really did. I thought it was great but I don't think it's worth, I definitely don't think it's worth the secondary price. Not. No. Um, like I would probably pay retail plus on it, but not secondary for that. I got a, I got a question for you guys. Everybody talked about what they like and you know, what they're willing to pay for. But my question is this, how many of us actually stand in line? Oh, I don't. I, I don't. mean, I, I think most of no. us get a, get a phone call or a text message I, I, I don't wait in line. I know that. I, okay, well, it's here. Well, I think you got a lot of different things here. Like you have um, I've, done a, I've done a short line. Yeah. 
Well, you have different demographics here too. Like we have some of us, all of us are from all over and we, that's one advantage we already have. We're from all over and we're able to share uh, dog shampoo throughout the United States. So that, that gives us an advantage already. And then the other thing is too, is not all of us are tied as closely, you know, uh, to our paycheck. And we, we have a little bit more means, some of us, to where we can get those things that we might want. And, and some of those things that we might want, we, we, we might be willing to pay a little bit more on secondary um, because I've done that. I don't, I'm not proud of it, but I have, you know, uh, and I would have paid, you guys know what I would have paid for uh, Eagle Rare 17, 18, 19, or 20. And I just never could find it at that price point. It was still two or $300 more. And I was like, I just can't do that. I can't articulate I waited that. Oh, I'm sorry. I waited oh, in line at, he- at Heaven Hill just because I happened to be there on a trip one time and I was at the front of the line and we were going to go in there anyways. And I was just, you don't know what they're going to offer. Right. So you wait in line and see what they got. And I got a William heaven Hill 13, which ended up being like one of my favorite bottles of the year. Like, I love it. It's like right in my sweet spot. It was expensive. I think it was like 175, but I just kept reaching for it. And like, if that's, if that's what I'm going to do and I like it, I'll, I'll pay you 200 bucks for that. Hell yeah. yeah. But am I going to wait in a, in a 50 person line in the pouring ring? Fuck no, definitely no. not. Like no, or 30 I'm gonna, degrees. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. It'll be fun. And then I'm going to move on. Yeah. yeah, I've, I've, yeah. Done, now I've done a short line. I've done. Um, and usually that's with a, um, I've, you know, I, I've got a couple of places where I've gotten a couple of phone calls. So, you know, if, if I roll in this, you know, one or two, yeah. I think the only time I've really stood in line, we had a, um, there was a Buffalo Trace drop uh, early last year, late, late 2019. It was for uh, Stag Jr. and quite a few. And um, so that was a, that was a bit of a line. Um, maybe once or twice, but it's not something I do on a regular basis. But, you know, like since then, I've, I've been able to get some phone calls. So I just like to win one of the lottery picks one time. That would just be nice. <laughs> I've never won. won. I, well, I put I in for two. it every year and I lose every year. So I've gotten two, so I'm OK. But um, but now for me, when it when it looks at I'm into the toasted right now. So I want to try the, the Michter's uh, toasted barrel. I want to try that. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I, I want to. Uh, I, I'm always down with the uh, Elijah Craig toasted and um, I want to try some of the other versions that are coming out to see what like they're basil hazen basil hayden maybe well, i definitely want to get that but uh and everybody i tried it, it what's your thoughts on it toasted yeah i thought it was i thought it was enjoyable and actually i just did a tasting at the local liquor store down the road and um they had the beam guy there so we were talking about it and i was like you know the the toastiness wasn't so much that like the smoky profile it was like like a creme brulee toast or like a oh, wow. you, like Sweet he, that's actually what he said and I was like oh that's exactly what I was thinking um but again it's one of the it's lower proof right so it's like a good start to the night like it's not what I'm going to drink all night but it's a great palate warmer just like mm-hmm. Blanton's for me like anything under 100 proof is like I like this to start my night and then I'm going to move into the higher proof stuff. Because if you start at 135.2 or something, it's like, <laughs> done. You, you, yeah. you really do, though. You have to, like, ramp up your You're proof. two in, partying like a rock star. Yeah, 135.6, yep. actually. There you go. Is that Copper <laughs> so, Sky? Yeah. 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 I can't wait to try that. I haven't had it yes, yet. Yes, but yes. Um, yeah. I'm going to be in Colorado this weekend. Is that where it's from, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're at. Um, I'm going to a show at Red Rocks on Sunday. Oh, oh that's like right down the road from my house, literally. Okay. Nice. Okay, well, well, that I was the end of that conversation. Well, yeah. no, so, I, just, so, I, I so don't want to invite in, myself so. over, but. <laughs> <laughs> but really let that me one. let me finish here. So I always try to get um, a stag as well. Stag Senior is by far my favorite allocated outside of of. Um, uh, Eagle Rare 17. I, I I just love the profile. I love the complexity in it. And I love the fact that and I've said it a thousand times on the show. You, we could all have a sip of it right here yes. and we're all going to pick up different notes. And I love that it is that complex. 
Um, and it's just a, it's a good staple and it's a good one you can celebrate with, but I would absolutely open it up right away and pour myself a glass. That's it. Cause it is, it is very good. The, um, Maker's Mart, I'm definitely sold on them since 2020. Um, and then I've already said the toasted, if I can find another King's honey or definitely a copper sky honey, I'm going to buy it. I know I can't find another copper sky honey because they're sold out, but if I could, I would, um, but the King's honey, by far the best honey outside of copper sky. Uh, but they're two different profiles. One's, uh, one's a wheat and the other one's, uh, I think an MGP sourced and, um, and, but it's the honey profile that they have in that. And I, I'm not even a person that likes honey. It's just the, it's the, it's the, it's more of the, how it, the texture of it, the tactile aspect of it that you take in is what I enjoy yeah. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, the honey was 100 and 107.5 on batch one. Okay. So, yeah, that's reasonable proof point. Like I'm all about that. Yeah. The Kings is 108, I think 108.6, something like that. It's pretty high. Well, it's higher proof as well. Right. Yeah. Um, Wheeler's raid has a honey floating around right now. I'm not a big fan of it, man. I'm really not. You didn't like it? No, it, it, the it honey tastes, or just yeah. Wheeler's Raid in general? Uh, are you asking me, do I like Wheeler's uh, Wheeler's Raid in general or the, just the honey? I tried both of them. I'm not a big fan of either one. Do I like them? I do. Do I think it's worth the price point that it's at? The answer is no. Okay, that's fair. Um, but do I think, is it something I enjoyed? Absolutely. It's something I would, I would do again. Yeah, like if it was the top shelf one at a bar, um like you know how you know our normal bars we go to and they may have you know woodford sitting up there and they may have some blends i would probably pull the trigger on uh on a wheeler's raid uh honey on if, if it was that case if that makes any sense so i just have a real quick random allocation question because one of my my most famous or favorite <laughs> ever is uh van winkle family reserve rye like, does that even ever come out every year? Is that like just something that comes out every once in a while? Because I had like a 2013 once, like the best whiskey I ever drank in my life. I obviously love rye. Um, and then I had another year. I've tried like three different years of Van Winkle Family Reserve Rye. And it is my favorite whiskey of all time because every, all three times I was just like, this is fucking amazing. So I don't know, Chuck, you, you know a lot about allocation. Do you know if that's something that comes up annually yes i believe it that... I, I believe that one does come up every year annually okay so if i knew that was around maybe i would ex expend a little bit more effort but um but really here in minnesota it's like it's all raffle or if you spent a certain amount of money at a liquor store which mm -hmm. i'm not willing to do so but that that is my unicorn bottle is the van winkle family reserve drive yeah. someday in my life i will have one nice i dig it well listen guys um that was fun. I've enjoyed it. And uh, we're at that, that moment where we're going to say goodbye. So uh, guys, thank you for all being on the show. Uh, if you get a chance, make sure you get out there to um, Billy. Is it cafe 305 um, BBQ. barbecue? Yeah. BBQ.com. Dot com. Com. And then your, your uh, YouTube channel is be good to yourself. Be good to yourself on YouTube. And of yes. course we're on YouTube and uh, soon to be on your local podcast uh, everywhere and anywhere. And um, guys, Everyone, have an enjoyable night. Be good to yourselves. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Have a good one. What's your name? What? What is your name? Tony! <laughs>